ಜೀವನ ಕೇಳಿ ಕರಾಯನ ಮನಸ ಚಂದ್ರ ಚಕೋರ ನಮ ಶುರ ಕೃಷ್ಣಯ ರಾಖೋ ವಚನ ಮನ ಮೋಹಿ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಮುಕುಂದ ಕೋರಿ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ್ಯಾರೋತ್ತಮ ದೈವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಯ ಮುಧೀರ್ಹಯ ನಸ್ತ್ರಯು ಬದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವಾಯ ಭಾಗವತಿ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಿ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟ್ ಒನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಒನ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಟು ಧರ್ಮ ಪ್ರೋಜಿತ ಕಾಯ್ತವೋಟ್ರ ಪರಮೋ ನಿರ್ಮತ್ಸರಣ ಸತ ಧರ್ಮ ಪ್ರೋಜಿತ ಕಾಯ್ತವೋಟ್ರ ಪರಮೋ ನಿರ್ಮತ್ಸರಣ ಸತ ವೇದ್ಯ ವಾಸ್ತವ ಮತ್ತು ಶಿವದ ತಪಾತ್ರಯೋನ್ಮೂಲನ ವೇದ್ಯ ವಾಸ್ತವ ಮತ್ತು ವಸ್ತು ಶಿವದ ತಪಾತ್ರಯೋನ್ಮೂಲನ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಗವತೆ ಮಹಾಮುನಿ ಕೃತೆ ಕಂ ಪಾಪರೀಶ್ವರ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಗವತೆ ಮಹಾಮುನಿ ಕೃತೆ ಕಂ ಪಾಪರೀಶ್ವರ ಸದ್ಯೋ ಹೃದಯ 
Rudyate Chakriti Bhi Susushri Bhi Takshanat Sakyo Vidya Sajjyo Riraya Varudyate Trakriti Bihi Sushutsha Bihi Takshanat Sajjyo Riraya Varudyate Trakriti Bihi Sushutsha Bihi Dharma Prajita Kaita Dharma Prajita Kaita Vedyam Vastavam Matravastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam Vedyam Vastavam Asparasu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Parishwara Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Sadhyo Ridaya Varudyate Takriti Bihi Sushrukshi Bihi Takshanat Sadhyo Ridaya Varudyate Takriti Bihi Sushrukshi Bihi Takshanat Dharma Vedyam Vastavam Matravastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam Vedyam Vastavam Matravastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Parer Ishwara Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Sadhyo Ridaya Varudyate Trakriti Bihi Sushrushubis Takshanat Sadhyo Ridaya Varudyate Trakriti Bihi Dharma Prajitita 
Dharma, religiosity, projita, completely rejected, kaitavaha, covered by fruitive intention, atra, herein, parama, the highest, nirmatsaranam, of the one hundred percent pure in heart, satam, devotee, vedyam, understandable, vastavam, factual, atra, herein, vastu, substance, Shivadam, well-being, tapatraya, threefold miseries, unmulanam, causing uprooting of, Srimat, beautiful, Bhagavate, the Bhagavata Purana. Mahamuni, the great sage Vyasadev, Krite, having completed, Kim, what is, Va, the need, Parai, others, Ishwara, the Supreme Lord, Adya, at once, Ridhi within the heart, avarudyate, become compact, atra, herein, kritibi, by the pious man, susrushubi, by culture, takshanat, without delay. Translation, completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality 
distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Purana compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge the Supreme Lord is established within the heart. Purport by Śrīla Prabhupāda. Religion includes four primary subjects, namely pious activities, economic development, satisfaction of the senses and finally liberation from material bondage. Irreligious life is a barbarous condition. Indeed, Human life begins when religion begins. Eating, sleeping, feeding and mating are the four principles of animal life. These are common both to animals and to human beings. But religion is the extra function of the human being. Without religion, human life is no better than animal life. Therefore, in human society there is some form of religion which aims at self-realization and which makes reference to man's eternal relationship with God. So, this is a very Nice verse that uh, Prabhupada's invocation is in three slokas. This is the second sloka. Yesterday we did the first one. Of course, we didn't go into detail in the first sloka. As I said, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati spoke in it for one month. So we just only read it. <laughs> we didn't really go into it. But here in the second sloka, an important point is made, you see, uh, that religion should not be mo just for material purposes. If people are just motivated by material gain, then that is not real religion. And Prabhupada points out that religion is something very important in human society. You know, today more and more people are atheistic. You know, you have countries in the world which are communist. A communist country, they, they, don't, they don't like religion. They don't encourage religion. There are five communist countries in the world. China, North Korea, Laos, uh, Cuba and Vietnam, they are still embracing communism and so they don't encourage religion. But Prabhupada points out, if you don't have religion then it's simply animal life because the life is simply based on four activities, eating, sleeping, mating and defending. If people don't have any time for God, then they're just like the animals. And Prabhupada would say, what is the difference? You're running on four wheels and the dog is running on four legs. The dog is thinking, where is food? Where is sleep? Where is sex? And the man is in the same mood. There's no difference. Not true. The, the, the whole motivation behind everything people are doing is eating and sleeping, mating and defending. 
they have no other higher purpose in life than that. So religion is very important. Without religion, then man is simply animal. We say dvipada pashu. Pashu means animal and dvipada two legs, right? <laughs> so two-legged animals and business in life is just that. We'll read more of Prabhupada's purport. In the lower stages of human civilization, there is always competition to lord it over the material nature. Or, in other words, there is a continuous ri rivalry to satisfy the senses. Driven by such consciousness, man turns to religion. He then performs pious activities or religious functions in order to gain something material. But if such material gains are obtainable in other ways, then so-called religion is neglected. This is the situation in modern civilization. Man is thriving economically, so at present he is not very interested in religion. Churches, mosques or temples are now practically vacant. Men are more interested in factories, shops and cinemas than in religious places which were erected by their forefathers. This practically proves that religion is performed for some economic gains. Economic gains are needed for sense gratification. Often when one is baffled in the pursuit of sense gratification, he takes to salvation and tries to become one with the Supreme Lord. Consequently, all these states are simply different types of sense gratification. So Śrīla Prabhupāda pointed out that uh, generally in the, in the world uh, human life will begin uh, well the Vedic, the Vedic literatures describe about the goals of life and the goals of life they encourage pious activities, they encourage people to be religious. But the purpose of their practicing religion is gain, they want to improve their life materially. And generally it happens that people in the beginning, they're very pious and religious and because they're pious and religious, they are rewarded and they live comfortably, they get economic development, they get more money, their life improves. When they become religious, they get more gifts from, by the grace of God and they live nicely and more comfortably. So they get economic development. But the problem is the economic development is not meant just for our own sense gratification. It's not that we're meant to get more money just to live comfortably, but we're meant to go on and understand the higher goal of life. But generally people don't think about any purpose in life. They think life is just meant for live comfortably, make money and enjoy and relax. And they don't, they don't think about any purpose in life. But sometimes when people uh, when they meet with difficulties in life, then they'll think about salvation. They'll think about becoming one with God. They think, if I can get liberation. So the Vedas, they deal with these four things. So you say, Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. Right? This is generally what the Vedas is talking about. Dharma means material religion. Material religion is they go to God to pray, give me, right? Give me and we have a, we have a list 
I, I need this, I need that. Give me a nice wife and a home by the sea. Om Jai Jagadish Hari. Man, we want that, these things. We want to be comfortable in the material world. So we pray, we go to God and we see people in the beginning, in the, in, long ago in the past, people were quite religious. Just like the first people to go to America, they, they were religious people. They went to America, they built churches and America began to prosper. But now today there's, you know, people don't want religion anymore. They just want money. They just want to enjoy the material world. And atheism is more and more common in the world. And they even try to advertise it and promote it. And they'll put big slogans on the buses saying, Why should you believe in God? You never saw Him. Nobody ever saw Him. How do you know there's a God? Do what you do what feels good. Don't worry what your heart says. And they'll tell you all these things. They want to lead people away from God. So religion is not meant for material gain. That is called Kaitava Dharma, cheating religion. We give the example just like the woman may say to the man, the woman who is a prostitute, she may say to the man, I love you, I love you. But all the time she's thinking, where's the money? So people go to God the same way. We say, oh, I love you. Oh, Bhagavan, I love you. Where's the money? The Buddha is like that. We want to get. We don't really, that is not pure love, right? That is kaitava, that is cheating religion. So that kind of religion is rejected in Srimad Bhagavatam. And you want that kind of religion, don't read the Bhagavatam. And a lot of people, they won't, they won't read Bhagavatam because they know, oh, oh no, I don't want. They will go, they will read Puranas or they will read Vedas, they may read Mahabharata, Mahabharata, a lot of Karmakandi things that are there in Mahabharata. But Srimad Bhagavatam, all of the kaitabhat, all the cheating is kicked out. It's not, uh, it's not there in the Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is presenting pure devotion, pure love. So, you can see uh, Nirmat Saranam Satam. Nirmat Saranam Satam, meaning those who are pure in the heart, they're not envious, they're, they don't have material desires, so they're nirmat saranam satam. They've taken shelter of the Lord, they've really taken shelter without any material thought. So Prabhupada says, in the Vedas, the above mentioned four activities. You know the four activities? What were the four activities from the Vedas? We just mentioned. What are the four activities in the Vedas? Mentioned in the Vedas? Four activities. Dharma. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Religion, economic development, sense gratification and moksha is liberation. Right. So these four things are mentioned in the Vedas. And uh, they are prescribed in the regulated, regulative way so that there will not be any undue competition for sense gratification. But Srimad Bhagavatam is transcendental to all these sense gratificatory activities. It is purely transcendental literature which can be understood only by the 
pure devotees of the Lord who are transcendental to con competitive sense gratification. In the material world everyone's competing to enjoy, right? We get a bigger house, we get a bigger car, we get a more powerful car. It, it's all competition, we're competing, we want to show that I'm better than the next person. So Srimad Bhagavatam is not concerned with that. In the material world there is keen competition between animal and animal, man and man, community and community, nation and nation. But the devotees of the Lord rise above such competitions. They do not compete with the materialists because they are on the path. Which path are they on? Where are they going? Back to Godhead, right? Where there is eternal and blissful life. Such transcendentalists are non-envious and pure in heart. Right? Nirmatsaranam satam, they're pure in heart. In the material world everyone is envious of everyone else and therefore there is competition. But the transcendental devotees of the Lord are not only free from material envy but are well-wishers to everyone and they strive to establish a competitionless society with God in the center. The contemporary socialist conception of a competitionless society is artificial because in the socialist state there is competition for the post of dictator. From the point of view of the Vedas or from the point of view of common human activities, sense gratification is the basis of material life. There are three paths mentioned in the Vedas. One involves fruitive activities to gain promotion to better planets. Another involves worshipping different demigods for promotion to the planets of the demigods. And another involves realizing the Absolute Truth and His impersonal feature and becoming one with Him. So Prabhupada is describing to us how in the socialist society you know, they, they, they tell everyone is equal, we're all equal. But everybody knows we're not equal. You ask anybody in China, is everybody equal? They say, no way, <laughs> no way. Some people are very rich and some people are not well, so wealthy. So, and, and Prabhupada said, there's always competition who's, who's going to be in charge, who's going to be the, the Lingdawa <laughs> or Juicy, the Juicy, the chairman. Mao Juicy, C Juicy, Juicy means the chairman. So the chairman of the Communist Party, he's the controller, he's in charge. There's always competition, one man's always trying to get the next. So they say, no we are a socialist country, there's no competition, everybody is equal. But it's not true, there's so much competition. Everyone's competing with each other, trying to do better, trying to make more, trying to get bigger position. But 
Uh, that is because everyone's envious of another, someone else. They think, I can do better. If I was the chairman, I could do better. If I was in charge, I would do better. I would make the country better. Each man, see, each man is competing like that. So, Prabhupada describes how in the Vedas, there's different paths mentioned, right? There's the path of karma, karma kanda. Huh? Karma kanda that you, by doing pious activities you can go to heaven. Go to heaven and enjoy a long life. And the women are very beautiful there, and the men are very handsome, and there's no old age and disease or death there. Well, there's death, but it's a different kind of death. You give up the body. But the people want to go to heaven. And you, they, there's a lot of enjoyment there in heaven. The long life, the opulence, far greater than we can even imagine. The opulence in the heavenly planets is so great. So people want to go there. And they do pious activities. They can go there, but they cannot stay there. You go for some time, and then you have come back. Just like you go to America, you spend your money, I mean you have no money left, you have to come back, right? You spend all the money, you have to come back and work again. So you go to heaven, and you can enjoy your good pious activities, but you use it all up, you come back. So that's karma kanda. And then there's upasana kanda. Upasana kanda is where you worship the different devas. You worship the different demigods. You may worship Lord Shiva. You go to be with Lord Shiva. Or you worship Indra. You go to be with Indra. You worship the deva, you go to that place. But these de devas are all in the material world. They're not in the spiritual world. So you go there, you can stay there for some time, again you may come back. And there's also the, the nature of the material world is subject to destruction. It's going to end sometime. So you cannot stay there forever. So there's karma kanda, upasana kanda, and jnana kanda. Jnana kanda is the path of knowledge where you want to become one, enter into the oneness with the Supreme. It's a type of liberation, sayujya mukti, becoming one. So you enter into the oneness, there's no variety. It's all one, Brahman. No variety, no relationships. There's no pain, but there's no enjoyment. There's no pleasure. There's no pain, but there's no pleasure either. There's only the oneness. And there's no relationships, there's no activities. There's only just the oneness, that you're one. So what's the problem there? We get bored. You get bored. How long can you be like that? Nothing to do. No relationship. No activity. Don't do it. Just like if you go to the Buddhists, they'll tell you, don't speak to anybody. And you go for the weekend for a retreat. Don't speak to anybody, just sit, be silent, enjoy the silence of them. I thought people will go and then, right? They'll do that for some, for a weekend. Mm -hmm. After the weekend, okay, <laughs> back, to, back to the material world. So, they can't do it for very long, it's very temporary. But, no suffering but no enjoyment either. They do not know that there is spiritual pleasure. Krishna consciousness is to experience spiritual pleasure. Spiritual pleasure, 
chanting the holy name. We, we get a lot of pleasure, we feel very happy to chant the holy name. And hearing about Krishna is also pleasing to hear about Krishna's activities. And engaging in the service of the deities is pleasure. We take pleasure decorating the temple. Yashoda Mai will make the flower vases in KL temple. Very beautiful decorations, not this artificial flower. Real flowers. <laughs> You know, these artificial flowers, <laughs> plastic, you know. But she'll put real flowers everywhere, decorate everywhere, so nice, colorful. And it, it, it's a pleasure. She has a team, all ladies will come, they'll book, make beautiful flower vases and decorate the temple so nicely. That's spiritual pleasure, spiritual activities. So our soul needs activities. The nature of the soul is to be active. Buddhism, they deny. No, sometimes Buddhism is anatma, no soul. They don't believe in the soul. <laughs> they, they, they think or they think the soul is material and can be, can be annihilated. But we explain the soul is spiritual and there is spiritual pleasure. And there is variety in the spiritual world. One Buddhist man was asking me, we have this one man, he said, a nice man. He's a, he's a Buddhist. He's a Buddhist monk. He lives in Guangzhou in China. And he's very elderly. He's in his 80s now. Very nice man. Uh, he's been a friend of... When he met us, first of all, in China, in the 19... That was 1980s, uh, he got a book. He got the book, Coming Back, The Science of Reincarnation. And he read it and he said, oh, he said, this is wonderful. He said, I want to help you spread this knowledge all over China. He was so pleased. He, 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 and he did, he helped us to introduce Krishna consciousness in China. But he, he's a Buddhist, he was brought up a Buddhist. His mother was a Buddhist and she, he'd been a vegetarian all his life. You know, now he's a Buddhist monk. He asked me one day, he said, he said, you know, in Buddhism, everyone becomes a Buddha. Buddha is not man, not woman. He's, he's not human, he's not God, he's Buddha. Right? And everyone's goal is to become the Buddha. So he said, what happens in Krishna consciousness? And Krishna consciousness, because we, we tell people, you know, we're not Krishna. We don't become Krishna, right? So I told him, I said, in the spiritual world, he asked me, in the spiritual world, are there men and women? Are there men and women there? So I told him, in the spiritual world, all serving Krishna. They're all in love with Krishna. They're so happy serving Krishna. And they don't worry about sex and these things. That's the material world. But in the spiritual world, everyone is a pure-hearted soul. They're all in love with Krishna and they're all serving Krishna. He said, wow, very interesting. I was very interested to hear. So, we, are, we explain there is enjoyment, there is pleasure. It's not material, it's spiritual pleasure. Mm -hmm.
All right, so Prabhupada continues, the impersonal aspect of the Absolute Truth is not the highest. Above the impersonal feature is the Paramatma feature and above this is the personal feature of the Absolute Truth or Bhagavan. Srimad Bhagavatam gives information about the Absolute Truth in his personal feature. It is higher than impersonal literature and higher than the Jnana Kanda division of the Vedas. It is even higher than the Karma Kanda division and even higher than the Upasana Kanda division because it recommends the worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. In the Karma Kanda, there is competition to reach heavenly planets for better sense gratification. And there is similar competition in the Jnana Kanda and the Upasana Kanda. The Srimad Bhagavatam is superior to all of because it aims at the Supreme Truth which is the substance or the root of all categories. From Srimad Bhagavatam one can come to know the substance as well as the categories. The substance is the Absolute Truth, the Supreme Lord and all emanations are relative forms of energy. What happened? Oh, it didn't start. No, it started. You want to stop it? The sound is not clear. It didn't go on, is it? All right, so Prabhupada is explaining how these other paths, Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda, Pasana Kanda, they're all material and there's competition there. There's competition, karma kanda, people want to go to heaven and enjoy sense gratification. So you go to heaven, somebody wants to be king of heaven. You be the king of heaven, be Indra and have all the beautiful women worship you and everything, then people will be envious. And like that is competition. Jnana kanda, we want to become one enter into the oneness. But even then people, oh I'm a better, I'm a better yogi than this person. Or we, the, the, because the heart is not yet pure, upasana kanda, worshipping different gods, worshipping the gods, but for material purposes we're worshipping the god. We don't worship them with pure devotion. We worship them for some material purpose. People worship Lakshmi. Why? I want money. People worship Saraswati. Why? Want to pass the exam. <laughs> want, to, want to be a nice actor or nice dancer, whatever. It, it's all material. We worship Ganesh. Why? Some obstacle is there, some problem in their life. Worship Ganesh. It's all material. Have, we have our motives. It's not pure devotion. It's not. Pure devotion is what is given to the Supreme Lord, the Absolute Truth. All other poor processes are not complete, they're not perfect. So we have to understand everything carefully. 
that the Lord is the Supreme, one Supreme Lord, all others are his servants. Hmm? Prabhupada explains, nothing is apart and nothing is apart from the substance. Remember, Krishna is the substance, but at the same time the energies are different from the substance. This conception is not contradictory. Srimad Bhagavatam explicitly promulgates this simultaneously one and different philosophy of the Vedanta Sutra, which begins with the Janmadhyasya Sutra. So we, we saw that Janmadhyasya Sutra in the first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Janma Adi. Janma Adi means the creation, the sustenance and the annihilation, the three phases of time. So this is how Vedanta Sutra also talks. Vedanta Sutra, you know, Vedanta means end of knowledge. Veda is knowledge and Vedanta is the end of knowledge, but it's in a sutra. Sutra means condensed, just like condensed milk, right? They boil all the water off it, becomes very thick. So the Vedanta sutra, when it's a sutra, it's made very short, so difficult to understand the meaning. And the Mayavadi philosophers, all the Mayavadi sannyasis, they spend all their time studying Vedanta, trying to understand Vedanta. But if they, the, the, the Vedanta Sutra was written by Srila Vyasadeva and he has explained it in Srimad Bhagavatam. The, the Srimad Bhagavatam is actually the commentary the explanation of Vedanta Sutra. Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. And Prabhupada explains how from these books you will get the philosophy one and different, inconceivably, simultaneously, one and different. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains in Sanskrit they say achintya ved abeda tattva. Each of the four sampradayas they have their own philosophy. Like one is Vashista Dvaita, another is Dvaita Dvaita, Shud Advaita. Each of the different Vaishnava sampradayas have their philosophy. Shankaracharya his philosophy is Advaita. Shankaracharya, of course, is not Vaishnav Sampradaya. His is Mayavadi, the impersonal. But they have also Sampradaya. And his teaching is Advaita Vada, that everything is one. And that one is Brahman. And they say Jagat Satyam Brahman. Brahman Brahma and Satyam Jagat Mitya, that the Brahman is truth and the world is all Mitya, false, illusion, it's not real. Mm. They say like that. The Buddhists, they say everything is illusion, there's no reality. They say, like they will say only the void. In Chinese they say Kong, Kong. Everything is zero, nothing. So Lord Chaitanya's philosophy is it. We, we offer our respects to Prabhupada. Goravani, Goravani means the message of Lord Chaitanya. Goravani Precharine, preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya. Nirvishesha, Nirvishesha means the the philosophy of the Mayavadi, because they want to merge in the one, in the oneness. 
Nirvishesha and Shunyavadi. Shunyavadi is the Buddhist. Zero, Shunya. Everything is zero, void, Shunya. And Nirvishesha, no variety, only one. So, Lord Chaitanya preached against both of these philosophies. Nirvishesha, Shunyavadi, Paschacha Deshatarine. Paschacha, in the Western world, Prabhupada is preaching. But Nirvit, Lord Chaitanya was preaching against these two philosophies, Nirvishesha and Shunyavadi. Impersonalism and voidism. We are preaching Shuddha Shuddhabhakti, pure devotion. And it is described in this philosophy, inconceivably simultaneous, one and different. We are one with God and at the same time different from Him. Buddhism said no God. Shankaracharya said everybody's God. And we say one God and we are one with God, different from Him. One in quality, different in quantity. Right? That is achintya bed apeda tattva. We are one, but we're different in quantity. Like the spark in the fire, or the drop of water in the ocean. All right, so this is Lord Chaitanya's philosophy. Okay, nine o'clock. Any question? Anybody? Maybe we can go on with this verse tomorrow. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, uh, what is mean that Brahman? Uh, is it referring to Brahma or Krishna? Brahman. Brahman, Brahman means spirit. Spirit, it means not material energy, but spiritual energy. Brahman is not material energy. Um, spiritual energy, Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi. I am Brahman, I am a spirit soul. And in the Bhagavad Gita, in the 18th chapter, Krishna said, Brahmano hi pratistaham. We're a Brahman, we're all sparks of the Brahman, you see. But there's the Parabrahman. Lord Krishna is the Parabrahman, the Supreme Brahman, right? Now, of course, there's also Brahma, Lord Brahma, he's a Devata. He's the original person in the universe, Brahma. That's different from Brahman. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is Parabrahman. Arjuna says to Krishna, Param Brahm, par Param Dham, Param Brahm, Pavitram, Paramam Bhavam. Like that, Lord Arjuna is glorifying Krishna. He recognized Lord Krishna as being the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we are Brahman, but we are not Parabrahman. Parabrahman means the Supreme Brahman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other question? Jnana Kanda, they can go, they can get impersonal liberation. They can get impersonal liberation, they can go to the Brahma Jyoti. They can achieve Sayuja Mukti. But, as I was explaining, in the platform of Sayuja Mukti, in the Brahman, no activity, no relationship, no variety. Will you be happy there? You won't suffer. There's no suffering there. But there's no enjoyment there also. And our soul 
want activity. We like enjoyment. We like relationships. And when we are there in the Brahma Jyoti, at some point we will become restless, will come up. So Srimad Bhagavatam describes Arora Krishrina Parampatam Tata Patanti Ado Nadrita Yasmad Angraya. They fall down, they come back again to the material world because they, they give up all activity. But they want activity, the soul, and what happens? They don't know what is spiritual activity. Therefore, they take up welfare work. They do welfare activities, distributing food, open the kitchen, feed the poor, make a school for the children, make a hospital for the old people. They do things like that. They don't know what is spiritual activities. They don't know how to engage themselves in spiritual activity. And they will take up these welfare activities. So, so uh, you say that uh, the soul in the Brahma Jodi, one day might fall down, one yes. day might fall down, or forever will be there. Well, you can stay there a long time, but after some, at some point they may come back. They either come back or they will go on. They may go on, you see, they're in the Brahma Jyoti, there's no activity. Now it may happen at some point the Sankirtan devotees come. Even in the spiritual world, sometimes there's Sankirtan parties, different devotees, great souls from higher planets, they're coming and they're coming, sometimes they're coming into the material world for preaching. And so they may come past there and, and that soul who is in the Brahma Jyoti, he may see the Sankirtan devotees and he may be attracted and he may go and join them. So they can be liberated, they can be saved by the mercy of a devotee. But if they don't get the mercy of the, they'll, eventually they'll come back because they need activity, they need variety. So they, they just want to stop activities because they think it's all suffering, life's all suffering, no, give up everything. But they don't understand there is pleasure on the spiritual platform. And there are activities. It's not that you want to stop all activity. We want to purify the activities, purify the desire. Okay. And Krishna is what? Our Arjuna Is it true that we all are wife of Krishna? Well, we are all feminine in relationship to Krishna. Yes. Krishna is the male and we are feminine. In the sense that just like in the material world, a woman would be enjoyed by her husband. The man enjoys his wife. The, so we are all meant to give Krishna pleasure, all right? And when we give pleasure to Krishna, that is, act, that is our actual position. So in that sense, Krishna is the male and we are all feminine in his relation. We are the energy of Krishna, right? Krishna is energetic and we are part of the energy of Krishna. So we're meant to serve Krishna, we're meant to give pleasure to Krishna, just like a wife gives pleasure to her husband. So yes, we're feminine. Krishna is the male and we're all feminine. 
So in the spiritual world, men and women are there. And they can be husband and wife together, but they're all serving Krishna. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guru Maharaj, Nirma uh, Sarana, that in under a certain Yoga, this is, can be concluded as essence of Bhagavadam. Huh? The, the Nirma Sarana uh, is an essence of Bhagavadam, Srimad Bhagavadam, under a certain Yoga. No, no. This is the beginning of the Bhagavatam. This is a qualification for understanding Bhagavatam. The qualification is we have to give up envy. Prabhupada was explaining like that in the The essence of Bhagavatam is to develop love of God. But Nirmat Saranam Satam, this is the qualification for entering into the study of Bhagavatam that we should be without envy, then we can understand the Srimad Bhagavatam. Of course, envy, we're envious of Krishna, right? Krishna is Bhagavan, so we envy him. He's got more money than me, he's better looking than me, he's got more knowledge than me, he's stronger than me. Oh, oh that guy. <laughs> He's got every... So we envy Krishna, right? And that's why we're here, in the material world. We have to get free of that envy. We have to develop the love. I didn't tell you that. Um, love the classes Guru Maharaj did mention that uh, if you pray to the Lenny God, it might just end up giving you more trouble. I don't understand uh, what the this you pray to the demigods? Well, you may pray to the demigod, you may pray to the demigod, give me a nice husband. And you get a husband, but then the husband gets a lot of trouble. <laughs> you know? Oh, it's no money. Oh, he's always sick. Oh, he's always irritable. <laughs> and you think, you know, I got the husband, but... <laughs> I was better off without one, <laughs> right? Or you get money, you pray to God, give me money, and you get the money and then all the people come, they, they want to be your friends because you've got money, you know, the motive is to get your money and to enjoy your money. People all try to cheat you from your money. Money brings also so many headaches. You have money, you always have to worry about people stealing your money and what's happening to your money, where did it go and how to make it more. I was in Hong Kong, we had this one, one man, he was a life member, he was a Marwari and he had a, a watch business in Hong Kong in the 19... 80s, it was 1980s, I was there in Hong Kong, we were making life members. So this one man, very rich man, he had a hotel in Singapore and he had a watch factory in Hong Kong, many, many people working in his watch factory. So I went to see him one day, he was sitting on the phone, he was talking to the bank, he said, just tell me what I need to do to make more money. He already had so much money, you know, and he's talking to the man. What do I need to do to make more money? So, that's the material world. A waste of life. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki.
Okay. Här är bakom. Här är det. Det är mig, ja. Aha. Vad är det? Everything is...